Good afternoon. I am Brother James A. Harley, Associational Mission Strategist for Mercer Baptist Churches. There's 21 churches in Mercer County. And all of us are facing the coronavirus pandemic together in a lot of different ways. But one of the things I just want to remind you of today is we must put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And today in thinking about uh, a title for the message, Our Savior is the Breath of Life. Our Savior is the Breath of Life. And I'll be taking uh, my text from two different scriptures. Uh, the last one will be Luke 24, verses 1 through 6, and then John 11, 1 through uh, 6. In John 11, Jesus demonstrates his authority over death by raising Lazarus from the grave. And I want to read in John 11, verses 17 through 22. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Lazarus had already been in the grave four days, and the Jews had a belief that he could not be resurrected. His body had already begun to deteriorate. And Martha believes that Jesus is too late to help. But she believes that if Jesus prays, God will answer the prayer. But her weak faith, well, she had forgotten that the Son had life in himself, that Jesus is the life. He tells us that in John 14, 6, that, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus wrought miracles by his own power. She had forgotten this. Jesus said all authority is given to him. And so when we think about it, the answer that she uh, sought, Jesus gave to her. She was in hope, but she did not realize that if her brother came back to life, if her brother was raised from the dead, which she didn't think that, that Jesus would do it, but if he was raised from the dead, she didn't realize that he would still have to die again physically, not spiritually, but physically. So Jesus made a proclamation to Martha in verses 23 through 27. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now think about these comforting words. She thought that he would rise in the last day. She said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She had faith in that she believed that God would resurrect all the bodies and reunite them with their souls and have a brand new body. But she didn't realize that Jesus wanted to demonstrate to her that he was absolutely uh, in charge of life, that he was going to raise Lazarus from the grave. Give, give him a physical resurrection here. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. Your brother will live through eternity. Your brother will come back to life to hear. He was demonstrating to her that he had the authority and the power over death. You know, when we think about the coronavirus and the pandemic and how many people has already died and we must help people to realize that Jesus Christ is the one that has given us life and that we must trust Him, that we must look to Him for the answer. All of us will be, become sick one day. We may die at 20 years old. We may die at a month old. We may die at 102 years old. But we're going to die physically. And then we must uh, meet God. We must meet Jesus face to face. And he either will be our judge or our savior. 
And so it's going to be in our hands. It's going to be our decision. And this is what Jesus is wanting, is wanting everyone to realize, that the grave is not the end. The grave is just the uh, means that God uses for us to leave this life and enter into eternity. And so he's wanting to demonstrate that to her and help her to understand that, that he is the giver of life and that her brother will not only live again in eternity, but he'll live again on this earth. In her distress, there are two things that Jesus expresses to Martha. First of all, he expresses to her that his power is sovereign. He is sovereign in his power. And he lets her know that he is, I am the resurrection and the life. The very fountain of life. The very God in the beginning gave life. If we go back to read in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we read that God formed man of the earth and breathed into him uh, the breath of life. So God is the very fountain. The first two uh, people that ever lived upon this earth, Adam and Eve, received their life, received their eternity. They were, their eternal souls were given to them at the very beginning in the birth. They, I guess you would say it was uh, God just, he formed them and then gave them life. Jesus is also the head and the author of resurrection. Christ tells her that he has the power, lies in his own hand uh, to give eternal life to all those that will hear his voice one day and be, will come forward from the grave. Yes, one day there's going to be the shout, the sound of the trumpet, and all we're going to, we'll come out of the grave. And Jesus is the resurrection, and, it, and it's come from, that when we come from the grave, It'll be because of his command, because of his voice, because of his authority, because of his power. You know, it was a unspeakable comfort to all the Christians, all of us, to her, to all of us, that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. And the second thing that he talked to her about was the promise of the new covenant. In verse 26, and Jesus said, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who come into the world. Well, he wanted her to understand about never dying. And he's referring to the second death, not physical death. He was referring, because everyone that does not trust Jesus Christ will face the second death and that is eternal separation from God in a place called hell. And he wanted her to understand that we would not die spiritually, but we would have life. And this life was through Jesus Christ. It's a gift from him to us. And so this was the promise of the new covenant. The old covenant was under the sacrifice of animals. And they only covered uh, the sin until Jesus came. And the book of Hebrews talks about he paid uh, our sin debt, when he went into the Holy of Holies in heaven and sprinkled his blood on the altar of God and gave to us eternal life. So as we think about this new covenant, it says, and whoever lives and believes in me, and that's, when that me is Jesus Christ. And she said, yes, Lord, and notice, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the, living, the one that was to come and the one that was to die for uh, their, our sins. So to whom these promises are made, to those that believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, we must totally confide, must totally surrender our lives uh, to Him. Now I want to go to my second text this morning and the people of of the nation of Israel and Jerusalem and had come to a point in their life they thought that uh, Jesus was the Messiah. A lot of them trusted him. They walked with him. And uh, then all of a sudden he dies on the cross. They had never really grasped why Jesus had to go to the cross and to die for their sins that our sin debt might be paid. 
We owed a debt that we could not pay and only Jesus could pay that debt. And so he, he paid our debt. He was in the, in the ground, in the, in the tomb with the stone rolled up. And so many people then begin to be disheartened. So many people then begin to wonder, well, you know, I thought he would be the one, the two on the road to Emmaus thought that he would be the one that would uh, deliver them. They were looking for a conqueror, someone uh, militarily, but Jesus came to begin a spiritual kingdom through his death on the cross and his resurrection. And so that very day, the, we find that the two ladies that had been with Jesus from the time that uh, they were trusting him as Lord and Savior, uh, they come to the grave and they're there to uh, put spices on his body and they're wondering who's going to roll away this large, gigantic stone uh, from covering uh, the tomb. Now, in Luke chapter 24 and verse number 1, now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away. You know, when I think about this, I think about what was the ladies thinking? They, they knew that they watched them put the stone up and close the tomb, seal the tomb even. And now they look and the stone is laying away from the tomb. It's laying on, on the ground. And the tomb is open. And so what kind of an idea, what thoughts cross their mind is, as they, this uh, picture appears to them? Do they think that somebody has stolen the body? Do, do they think that Jesus is still there? So they, they're going to go in. They're going to go in and look around. I guess any of us has enough curiosity in our lives that we would go in and look around. I know I would. It said, then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Now, as we think about this, they go in and there's the surprise. There was the, the body was gone. And the grave clothes were still lying there, but the body was gone. And, all, and they look and there's two men shining, gloriously shining. And one at the head, one at the foot. And they began to make the proclamation from God. It says in verse number five, Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? What a question to, to ask the ladies. They are in shock. They're surprised. Uh, they don't know what to do or what to say. They, um, I know it, their emotions are running wild. And so they... They said, why do you seek the living among the dead? So this is a place for a dead person. The one you're looking for is alive. The surprise, Jesus is alive. The great announcement uh, to uh, the ladies. He is not here, but is risen. What a wonderful statement for us all. What a, a, what a hope that we can place in Jesus Christ. He is sitting today at the right hand of God. He lives within us through the Holy Spirit of God when we trust Jesus Christ. So he, he, the angels tell the ladies, remember he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. I hope and pray that during this time of uh, the, all the problems with the coronavirus, that you will remember that God is still in absolute uh, sovereignty over all things, in control of all things. And we must surrender our hearts and our lives uh, to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're listening to the sound of my voice and 
You're wondering about this, and Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. He, he paid your sin debt. And if you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, I invite you today to receive Christ. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and believe that He died on the cross. If it had been no one else in the world, He would have died for you. And you receive Him as Lord and Savior today. He is alive. He is risen. He's sitting right now making intercession as I share this sermon with you today, this message. And so we thank the Lord for everything that He does and everything that He's going to do during this time. Remember that He is your only hope. He is your peace. He's your strength. And so I pray that today you will trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this hour that you've given us, this time. Uh, I pray that those that are listening, you, that they will be obedient to our presidents and our governor's uh, message to us to stay indoors and to uh, not to be out no more than we have to be, except for the necessities of life. And I pray that those that are there will listen to uh, your word, that they'll turn to Luke 24 and read it if they have a Bible, or John 11, and understand that you are the answer for all their needs in this life. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, be in absolute control, and thank you for all the pastors that have come to preach your word, and uh, thank you for this holy week. Uh, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my many, many sins, and all this in Jesus' name, amen. During Holy Week, when we were able to gather, we always took an offering for the benefit of our Mercer County Ministerial Association Resource Ministry. During these times, those funds are needed more than ever, and without gathering, we do not have opportunity to receive that offering. If you are able and would be inclined to do so, you could make a gift to the Mercer County Ministerial Association and mail it to Post Office Box 421, Harrodsburg, Kentucky, 40330. Once again, that's P.O. Box 421, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And you can simply use the initials MCMA for Mercer County Ministerial Association. Thank you so much for considering a gift to help at this crucial time.